God bless you. My name is Harris Kakalides, and you're watching here in the program, Gain to Know Jesus. Today, I wish to talk about the feeding of the 5,000 men by Jesus. This miracle, which we're going to read about, is maybe one of the most important miracles mentioned in the Bible. For the simple fact that is mentioned in all four gospel accounts. Matthew 14 Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat, to a deserted place apart. When the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. Jesus went out, and he saw a great multitude. He had compassion on them, and healed their sick. When evening had come, his disciples came to him, saying, this place is deserted. The hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. They told him, We only have here five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. He commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed, broke, and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled. They took up twelve baskets full of that which remained left over from the broken pieces. Those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Mark 6 the apostles gathered themselves together to Jesus, and they told him all things, whatever they had done, and whatever they had taught. He said to them, You come apart into a deserted place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. They saw them going, and many recognized him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them, and came together to him. Jesus came out, saw a great multitude, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When it was late in the day, his disciples came to him and said, This place is deserted, and it is late in the day. Send them away, that they may go into the surrounding country and villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. They asked him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? He said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go see. When they knew, they said, Five and two fish. He commanded them that everyone should sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in ranks, by hundreds and by fifties. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves, and he gave to his disciples to set before them, and he divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were filled. They took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and also of the fish. Those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. Luke 9 The apostles, when they had returned, told him what things they had done. He took them, and withdrew apart to a deserted place of a city called Bethsaida. But the multitudes perceiving it followed him. He welcomed them, and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and he cured those who needed healing. The day began to wear away, and the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding villages and farms and lodge, and get food, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we should go and buy food for all these people. For they were about five thousand men. He said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about fifty each. They did so, and made them all sit down. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to the sky, he blessed them, and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. They ate, and were all filled, 
they gathered up twelve baskets of broken pieces that were left over. John 6 After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Sea of Tiberias. A great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he did on those who were sick. Jesus went up into the mountain, and he sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Jesus, therefore, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a great multitude was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, that these may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. Jesus took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to those who were sitting down, likewise also of the fish, as much as they desired. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the broken pieces which are left over, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up, and filled twelve baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. When therefore the people saw the sign which Jesus did, they said, This is truly the prophet who comes into the world. Jesus therefore, perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. I will name it, it's second to the resurrection. Now, and it's not just spoken about in those four accounts, but there's other accounts that makes mention of it as well. Mark 6 But they, when they saw him walking on the sea, supposed that it was a ghost, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. But he immediately spoke with them, and said to them, Cheer up, it is I. Don't be afraid. He got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were very amazed among themselves, and marveled. For they hadn't understood about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Mark 8 They forgot to take bread, and they didn't have more than one loaf in the boat with them. He warned them, saying, Take heed, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They reasoned with one another, saying, It's because we have no bread. Jesus, perceiving it, said to them, Why do you reason that is because you have no bread? Don't you perceive yet neither understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, don't you see? Having ears, don't you hear? Don't you remember? When I broke the five loaves among the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They told him, Twelve. When the seven loaves fed the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They told him, Seven. He asked them, Don't you understand yet? And we see a repetition of this miracle in the feeding of the four thousand. Mark 8 In those days, when there was a very great multitude, and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to himself, and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have stayed with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. If I send them away fasting to their home, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come a long way. His disciples answered him, from where could one satisfy these people with bread here in a deserted place? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves. Having given thanks, he broke them, and gave them to his disciples to serve, and they served the multitude. They had a few small fish. Having blessed them, he said to serve these also. They ate and were filled. They took up seven baskets of broken pieces that were left over.
Those who had eaten were about four thousand. Then he sent them away. Immediately he entered into the boat with his disciples and came into the region of Dalmanutha. Before we dive to see the miracle, it is important to know what led to this. Jesus just heard about the death of John the Baptist, according to Matthew. Mark and Luke tells us that this was also the time when the twelve disciples came back from being sent out and they told Jesus of all the miracles and teachings they did because Jesus has sent them out on that mission. We see that in Matthew 10, Mark 6, Luke 9. And Jesus' disciples were hungry and didn't eat anything so they were a little bit cranky. Maybe this is why they told Jesus to send the people to get something to eat for themselves because they wanted to eat. So the disciples expected to be by themselves with Jesus. Mark 6 verse 31 says, And he said to them, You yourselves come apart into a deserted place and rest a little. For those coming and those going were many, and they did not even have opportunity to eat. John also tells us that this event happened after the healing of the cripple at the pool named Bethsaida and Jesus confrontation with the Jewish leaders about the healing on the Sabbath in Mark 6 verse 32 it says and they departed by boat into a deserted place apart Mark tells us that the crowds recognized Jesus and they followed him the same crowd one would read in John would reject Jesus teaching about Jesus being the bread of life Jesus is not at this point looking at the future but the present they needed his teaching and healing so that is what he does he teaches them and heals them Matthew 14 verse 14 says and going out Jesus saw a great crowd and was filled with pity towards them and he healed their infirm ones their infirmities those that were sick in Luke 9 verse 11 it says but knowing this the crowds followed him and having received them he spoke to them about the kingdom of God and he cured those having need of healing. Notice Matthew said Jesus was filled with pity towards them. Why was that? Mark seems to give us the answer. Mark 6 verse 34 it says, And going out, Jesus saw a large crowd and had pity on them because they were as sheep having no shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. John states, And Jesus went up into a mountain and sat there with his disciples. And the Passover was near, the feast of the Jews. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing that a great crowd is coming to him, he said to Philip, From where may we buy loaves? that these may eat why did he ask philip this maybe because the reason was because philip was from Bethsaida. john 1 verse 44 now philip was from Bethsaida. in a way jesus was testing philip's faith they are from your town now how are you going to buy food for all those people we read of the number of the man being 5,000, but we are not told of the number of the woman and children, counting them could be over 10,000 people. The Bible makes it very clear Jesus knew what he was going to do and that he was testing Philip. John 6 verse 6 says, But this he said to test them, for he himself knew what 
he would do. John chapter 6 verse 7 states, Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not significant for them that every one of them may have a little. A denarius is a day's pay. <clears throat> According to Matthew 20 verses 1 and 2 it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Notice that he agreed with his laborers for a day's wage, a denaria. Some people believe that was the amount of money the disciples had on them. Others believe that that was the amount that came on Philip's mind. Whether the disciples had that amount of money on them is not 100% known, even though there is a verse that says it. But one thing is sure, it was not enough to feed that amount of people. 200 days worth of pay was not enough to feed them. It's important to note that God has ways of increasing his people's faith. And it is usually by having us in situations where everything seems hopeless. This was a hopeless situation. Mark Gospel states that the disciples said, Send them away, that going away to the surrounding fields and villages, they may buy bread for themselves, for they do not have what they may eat. It is important to notice that the disciples are constantly sending everybody away. It is as if they wanted Jesus all to themselves. They at occasions told the little children to go away because Jesus was going to bless them. A Gentile woman who went to Jesus because of her daughter having a demon, they told Jesus, send her away. And here again, we see them telling Jesus, send them away. Mark 6.37 says, And Jesus answered them and said to them, You give them food to eat. And they said to him, going, Should we buy 200 denarius of bread and give them to eat? <clears throat> that means that that's how much money they had on them. Because they, they, they said, should we buy 200 denarius of bread? They asked the question. Most likely that's how much money they had on them. Another disciple answered, his name was Andrew. Uh, Andrew is known for bringing people to Jesus, just like Philip. Andrew is the one who, who brought Peter, his brother, to Jesus. Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus. He is also the one who later, along with Philip, brings the Greeks to meet Jesus. And now we see Andrew brings a little kid to Jesus. John 6, verse 8 and 9, it says, One of his disciples Andrew, Simon's Peter brother, said to him, There is a lad here who have five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many? <clears throat> We're not told the age of the kid, but according to the Greek, it was a little boy or child. It was five loaves or what we call five barley bread and two fishes. Barley bread was the bread of the poor. It would usually be the bread the poor could afford, and the rich would usually feed their donkeys and horses with it at that time. The rich would enjoy wheat bread, while the poor enjoyed barley bread. It was the poor substance that Jesus used to multiply the fish and the bread. Andrew's faith was low, even though he brought this kid with the bread. Most likely, the only one with faith was the little lad. The scripture does not say, but we know that kid 
was willingly to bring what he had to the Lord. Or maybe he believed that that was enough. <clears throat> Little kids often show more faith than their parents. Next, we see that Jesus had the disciples sit the people in groups of 50 and 100. That's why it's very... The Bible teaches us that it was 5,000 men because most likely the men sat by themselves and the women sat with their children. Luke states in Luke 9 verse 14 and 15, For they were about 5,000 men. But he said to his disciples, Make them recline in groups of by fifty. And they did so and made all recline. Mark states in Mark 6 verse 39 and 40, and he ordered them all to recline groups by group on the green grass. And they sat group by group by a hundred and by fifty. Mark has us notice that the grass was green. A matter of fact, Mark gives us a picture of Psalms 23 if one was to read chapter 6 and 7. Jehovah is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mark states, he saw them as sheep having no shepherd, so he taught them. He became their shepherd. Notice that Psalms 23 says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. That is what he did. And that is what he did. He had them sit down in green grass or pastures. And we see the people are hungry, so he fed them. As the psalm says, I shall not want. <clears throat> we see Jesus healing them. We see Jesus teaching them. We see Jesus feeding them. Doesn't matter your need. Jesus is there to help you. He leads me beside still waters. If we was continue to read Mark, we see Jesus walking on water and stilling the waves of the sea. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And in chapter 7, we see him rebuking the Pharisees for their traditions and showing what is the real cause of defilement. And we also see the healing of the blind man and the Gentile woman daughter being healed from her demons. All this fits beautifully in chapters 6 and 7 of Mark's Gospel. Mark 6.41 says, And taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he blessed them, and broke the loaves, and gave to the disciples, that they may set before them. And he divided the two fish to all. You might ask the question, what kind of fish it was? According to the Greek, it could be translated pickle fish. It wasn't the <clears throat> that the kid had the jars of pickle fish, but it was the fish that people usually make pickle fish from. <clears throat> it was that kind of fish that Jesus multiplied. Jesus made it to feed a multitude. The blessing that Jesus will give in the breaking of the bread would have most likely be the blessing which the Jews give to this day. And the words are as follows. According to Adam Clark, one of the best Methodist commentators I've ever read, it says, Before they ate, before meat, um, the Jews would say, Baruch Ata Alohinu Melech Halolam Hamoste Lishem. Mean Haretz. Blessed art thou, our God, King of the universe, who bringest bread out of the earth. And after they ate meat, Banuk Aluhinu Melek Halam Bori Puri Hagi Fin. Blessed art thou, our God, King of the universe, the creator of the fruit of the vine. When Jesus made the water into wine, he made the best wine. 
When Jesus fed the 5,000, I imagine it was the best fish and bread they ever ate. Mark 6.42 says, And all ate and were satisfied. The Greek means they were full. They were satisfied. They ate till their hearts was content. And they took up the twelve baskets full of fragrance also from the fish. And those eating the loaves were about five thousand men. John lets us know that Jesus commanded for the leftovers to be taken. John 6 verse 12 and 13 says, And when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, that not anything be lost. Then they gathered and filled twelve hand baskets. Actually, the Greek says baskets. It wasn't hand baskets. It was just baskets. With fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over to those who had eaten. <clears throat> the Jews had different kinds of baskets. Different sizes. One of them was able to fit a person inside them because Paul escaped um, using one of these baskets. So it was pretty, maybe it was big baskets, who knows. The scripture is not real clearly about them, but I do believe it was probably big baskets that were filled. Um, <clears throat> we also read that in John, and the Jews said this is what John says that the Jews said this is truly the prophet that is to come what prophet are they referring to <clears throat> they're referring to the prophet that is to come that Moses spoke about in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 17 to 19 it says and the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you, Moses, from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. And this is why when John the Baptist came baptizing, the first thing they asked John, Are you Elijah? And then John says, I'm not. And then they asked him, Are you the prophet? The Jews were expecting that prophet. And that prophet is the Messiah, is Jesus Christ. Yes, they were right. Jesus was the prophet, and he is the prophet. He is also the king of the Jews. He is also our priest according to the order of Mechizedek, King of kings and Lord of lords. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is all that and more. He is our God, Emmanuel. God bless you and I'll see you next program of Getting to Know Jesus. Bye.